if everyone is saying the game is a 10 out of 10. No one wants to be the only guy shouting, Oi, I can see his penis! Hmm. That's not going to sound right without context. Back in the old days, the gaming industry was different. We didn't have your fancy battle passes and flashy microtransactions. We didn't spend our time twitching on streams. And the only emotes we had in game was the old putty rub salute. It was a simple time when above all else, you could still trust game reviews. We had to. How else were we supposed to know what games were good? There was no internet. Word of mouth was king. And the king of kings was the reviewer. Gods among men. Imagine being able to play games for free. Nay, to be paid to play games and then preach to the masses on tablets made of glossy paper. Your holy testament of what games we should buy and which should be cursed to the depths of obscurity in a thousand words or less. Naturally, reviewers' opinions had a lot of influence in those days. It was a power which they wielded with justice and authority. We trusted reviewers, and reviewers could be trusted. Until game developers realized, hmm, if we make reviewers say good things about our games, then people will think our games are good. And now, here we are. So the question remains, can you even trust reviews anymore? Here are seven reasons why you can't trust reviews further than you can throw them. Commercial pressures, 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 pressures. Perhaps the most significant factor eroding trust in gaming reviews is the immense commercial pressure on both game developers and the gaming media. Major game publishers invest substantial sums in marketing campaigns and advertising, often forming cozy relationships with game reviewers in the process. The financial independence can make it difficult for reviewers to remain impartial. They may fear repercussions if they give a negative review to a game from a major publisher, leading to potentially biased or inflated scores. This becomes particularly insidious as the same PR companies that help distribute the games in retail will pay for ads on these review sites. So reviewers know that if they don't review the games favorably, then there's a large risk of losing that sweet banner money. And what do reviewers love more than playing games for a living? Being able to eat and pay rent. Pre-release hype, 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 hype. This may be news to some, but the gaming industry thrives on pre-release hype. I know, right? Publishers and developers build up anticipation for their games through carefully orchestrated marketing campaigns, trailers, and exclusive access events. Suddenly, reviewers are part of the in-crowd, attending events with celebrities and game studio execs and free food. This leads to an environment where games' excitement can cloud reviewers' judgment. Some reviewers may find it challenging to separate their own excitement from the game's actual quality, potentially resulting in overly positive reviews. Review embargoes. 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 Game publishers often impose review embargoes, restricting when reviewers can publish their opinions on a game. This practice can lead to rushed reviews where reviewers don't have enough time to thoroughly assess a game before sharing their thoughts with the public. In some cases, it's even beneficial for publishers to withhold reviews until after a game's launch, preventing potential negative publicity. Sometimes these embargoes don't let you mention certain elements of the game or don't allow you to publish your comments unless you've played a predefined amount of time in the game, which often restricts reviewers from sharing their full opinion till after the game has already been released. And the developers have your sweet, sweet money. Influence of Metacritic and Aggregator Scores Aggregator scores, scores, scores. Many gamers rely on aggregator sites like Metacritic for a quick gauge of a game's quality. This dependence can put undue pressure on reviewers, as a low score can have a significant impact on a game's sales and reputation. Some reviewers may feel compelled to adjust their scores to align more closely with Metacritic's average, rather than offering a genuinely honest assessment. It's like the story of the Emperor's New Clothes. If everyone is saying the game is a 10 out of 10, no one wants to be the guy shouting, oh, I can see his penis. You see, much better with context. Democratization of opinion. Opinion, opinion, opinion. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for democracy. <laughs> it's certainly better than whatever the alternative is. Everyone gets a say. Beautiful idea in theory. The problem is how suddenly everything becomes a democracy. Everyone had a voice, and suddenly we believed everyone had something worthwhile to say. 
You only have to spend about two minutes on social media, especially during the pandemic, to realize why you shouldn't be getting your medical advice from people on the internet. Nope. Similarly, when it comes to games, suddenly every gamer thinks they are a game reviewer. I cannot tell you the amount of ridiculously mid, 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 am I, am I doing it right? Do you have to have the air quotes? The amount of ridiculously mid opinions I've heard about games. Let's maybe let game developers develop games. In the same way as eating food doesn't make you a chef, playing games doesn't mean that suddenly you know a thing about game design. You end up sounding like the guy, you know the guy, we all know him, who shouts at professional athletes whenever they make a play he doesn't agree with because he was this close to going pro, if only he didn't take an arrow to the knee. Are you tired of seeing online arguments that go on and on with no resolution in sight? Are people wrong on the internet and you just have to let them know? Try new Speech Trainer for you. STFU will help you navigate these tricky situations with a simple, easy to follow routine of biting your tongue, holding your mouth, and keeping it to yourself. Learn to repress your thoughts and keep them bottled up inside to tell someone who cares, like your parents or court-appointed therapist. Try STFU today. Influencer and streaming partnerships. Yep, yep, yep. In the age of YouTube and Twitch, influencers and streamers have become powerful forces in shaping public opinion about games. For better or worse. Some of these influencers have partnerships or sponsorship deals with game developers or publishers. And while this isn't inherently problematic, it can lead to biased coverage and the omission of critical analysis. Now that many folks don't even listen to reviewers because they don't trust them and prefer to watch Twitch streams, gaming companies are all like, if we make streamers say good things about our games, people will buy our games because they think they are good. Community polarization. Gaming communities can be passionate and polarized. Duh. When a game receives a negative review, it can trigger hostile reactions from fans who see it as an attack on their favorite title. This environment may discourage reviewers from delivering honest but critical assessments, further eroding trust. Don't get me wrong, these are the same communities that constantly shit talk the game, flame other members of the community, and tell the developers to kill themselves on a daily basis. But when a reviewer does it, You've just, it's, you've gone too far, man. Review bombing, 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 bombing. In a truly marvelous testament to human ingenuity and our ability to weaponize everything, we even managed to weaponize reviews with review bombs. Just get a group of your closest friends and form an angry mob to give a game negative reviews. Do you hate the new content update? Review bomb. Did they nerf your favorite hero? Review bomb. Did your girlfriend dump you? <laughs> Review bomb. Hate golf? Review bomb. I'm sure we can trust these reviews. So you can't trust reviewers. You can't trust streamers. You can't even trust your dear old grandma. So who can you trust? The government. <laughs> me. You can trust me. On what games to play, what not to play, even how to invest your pension. This is a safe space. And all I ask in return is your immortal soul. For you to like and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be tons of really great content, I, I promise. And uh, you don't want to miss it. So click that like button, subscribe. For those of you who already have, welcome. In the meantime, why not check out this tasty piece of content about why open world games stink.